boys and girls, since this week is zoo, Miss Myers and I thought you would enjoy a book about what a zoo worker does. So this is titled, What's It Like to Be a Zoo Worker? And we go in, here's the title page. <clears throat> What's It Like to Be a Zoo Worker? Now this was written by Judith Stamper and it's illustrated by Kathleen Gary McCord. And Miss Myers and I were noticing that it says they actually talk to people at the San Diego Zoo, which is out in California, for some of this information. <clears throat> what does the zoo mean to you? Animals, of course. A zoo has elephants, lions, camels, monkeys, seals, snakes, and much more. Ooh, so this says it's an African elephant an iguana, a pygmy chimpanzee, and a black spider monkey. Oh, and there's a python. But people are also very important to a zoo. Who makes the homes for the animals? Who prepares their food? Who helps sick animals be well again? Who makes the zoo an exciting place to visit? Zoo workers do. So here's a boa constrictor, a baby koala mm -hmm. and that's its feeding bottle and it has special food for a little koala. The zoo director is in charge of running the zoo. One of the director's jobs is to add a new animals, it is to add new animals to the zoo. Zoo directors send each other lists of animals they want to trade. A zoo in New York may have an extra baby elephant. A zoo in California may have an extra monkey. The zoo directors work out a plan to trade the animals. A zoo architect works with the director to plan homes for the animals. Today, zoos have fewer cages than they used to. Animals are put in natural environments similar to their homes in the wild. So here our little baby elephants are called calves. And then we have ostriches here, African rhinoceros here, and meerkats. And then we have a common agama. Hmm, he looks like he's maybe in the lizard group. Mm -hmm. Interesting, pretty colors. <clears throat> a penguin from Antarctica needs a cold environment. Its zoo home must be air conditioned. The penguins are also given large pools to swim in and rocks to dive from. So there's a little penguin chick with his little soft down before he gets his feathers. Here's a grown up, an adult penguin, and she's got fish for them. Gorillas are the largest of the apes. They need lots of room in which to move around. They need bars to climb on for exercise. And just like a person, sometimes a gorilla wants to be alone. The zoo gives it a private place where it can escape from visitors' eyes. So this is a gorilla family here. Isn't that nice that they think about that? Because sometimes I know when I've gone to the zoo, the gorillas are out playing and then they kind of disappear. You see them go off and I guess they're just like all of us. Sometimes they don't want people watching them. They just want to be alone. The zoo director tries to make the zoo an exciting place to visit. One zoo has a monorail train through Africa. This part of the zoo is made to look like real parts of Africa. The train carries visitors safely through the natural homes of cheetahs, tigers, and elephants. So here's a cheetah, that must be mama, and then the baby cheetahs. That would be fun, go right through there. Another zoo has a huge birdhouse that visitors can walk through. The building is full of tropical plants. All sorts of birds fly around freely as they do in the wild. And this, oh, they've got a screen there for them to keep the birds in. That makes me think of the Cincinnati Zoo, Miss Myers, because mm -hmm. we have a lovely birdhouse at we our do. zoo. And yes. this kind of makes, I think, oh, maybe they're talking about our zoo. <laughs> Another important job belongs to the zookeeper. A large zoo will have many keepers. Each zookeeper is in charge of a certain group of animals. There is a keeper for the big cats, a keeper for the reptiles, and so on. 
So she has a timer and a notepad here, keeping notes. And this little guy's called a golden marmoset. The head keeper makes a record of all the animals. He writes down information like this for each animal. So this says Jasmine, Bengal tiger, female. So that means she's a girl. <clears throat> It tells when she was born on September 12th. Oh, and she was from a London Zoo. London's over in England. A keeper visits the animals every morning. He talks to them and checks their health. He keeps their homes neat and clean. So here's the giraffe and here's the hay up here. It's got some food. The keeper will see if the animal is doing well in its zoo home. An unhappy leopard may need a different diet or may need more exercise. He doesn't look very happy. So I noticed the keeper's really watching him, trying to figure out what they can do for this leopard. The zookeeper is also in charge of feeding the animals. She orders their food, she keeps track of what they eat, and she gives them their meals. Visitors love to watch the big cats at feeding time. The lions roar when they are hungry. A large lion will eat almost 10 pounds of raw meat in one meal. At feeding time, the keeper sees that the big cats are separated from one another. That way they will not fight over their food. So here's the lion and there's the zookeeper and that is raw meat he's eating. At the zoo, there are many mouths, both large and small to feed. The kitchen in a zoo is a huge place. There are ovens in which to bake bread for the bears. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> bear bread. <laughs> there are refrigerators where fish for the seals are stored. There are giant cutting boards used for chopping meat for the lions and chopping fruits and vegetables for the monkeys. A special menu must be prepared for each animal. An orangutan's dinner menu might look like this. So this says orangutan dinner. Two apples, two oranges, two bananas, one yam or potato, one carrot, two slices of bread, lettuce. Hi, hey, that guy's a vegetarian. <laughs> Many zoo animals have very special diets. The duck-billed platypus from Australia eats crayfish, shrimp, tadpoles, and earthworms. Some zoos have their own earthworm farms just to feed these picky eaters. So the keeper has earthworms in here, and these are the platypuses. Pandas are also problem eaters. Their favorite food is bamboo, a hard food to find in some parts of the world. Some zoo pandas have begun to eat apples and grapes as well. Others want only one thing, bamboo. And this is a giant panda. <clears throat> oh, and here's the bamboo, the plant that they like to eat. <clears throat> the zoo doctor takes care of sick animals. Her job can be difficult and dangerous. A sick bear cannot say where he hurts. A sick tiger can be in a very bad mood. So here she has, this is a Himalayan black bear, and this is anesthesia. That means it puts him to sleep. <clears throat> and then the, her, uh, the vet has the bandage here. Oh, and they even do their blood pressure, like a cuff to check the blood pressure, and then a special light so the veterinarian can see. The zoo has a hospital where sick animals are treated. An animal with a broken leg is brought to the hospital. The doctor sets the leg with a cast. So here's the veterinarian, and then they have the um, animal here. I This is interesting. That almost looks like an antelope. Chamoy, I guess is how you pronounce it. I'll have to look that one up. Boys and girls, so I looked up on the phone and this is actually pronounced chamois. And it says that it is a goat antelope. So we, Ms. Myers and I thought that was really interesting mm -hmm. and we wanted to share that with you. Yeah. A sick elephant cannot come to the hospital. The doctor must go to the animal's zoo home. The elephant has a fever and won't eat. The zoo doctor gives the big animal a shot. 
the brave elephant stands very still. So here's the African elephant. Oh, and there's the veterinarian and he has his stethoscope. And we used that one time, um, I can't remember if it was our morning class or enrichment, but we listened to our heartbeats. I think it was afternoon. Sometimes zoo babies are brought to the hospital. Their mothers may not want to feed them. A baby bear can be fed from a bottle with a special formula. So look at that little monkey. That's a white-nosed monkey, and this is a baby polar bear. Oh my goodness, now that would be fun. In one zoo, a mother hippo wouldn't take care of its baby. The zoo doctor became its mother. She bathed the baby in a warm tub of water. She petted it and fed it a bottle. So here's Mama Hippo and she wasn't helping take care. So this, uh, the keeper is there taking care of the baby Hippo. A zoo trainer teaches the animals special ways to behave. Zoos, some zoos offer elephant rides to visitors. The trainer works many years with an elephant before it is ready to safely carry a passenger. Oh, that looks like fun. So they're in a little saddle up there. That's an Asiatic elephant. So that takes a lot of training from what we just read. Trained animals are fun for visitors to watch. Training can be good for the animals too. Sea lions and otters are a special favorite of visitors. Putting on a show breaks the routine of zoo life. <laughs> it's a little sea otter and a sea lion. Many other people work in a zoo. The zoo guards protect the animals. They make sure visitors obey the signs that say, do not feed the animals. So here are one of the guards just reminding that that says, don't feed them. And this is an Indian rhinoceros. Look at that little baby down there. Oh, and there's a sky ride back here. Ooh, I bet that would be fun to look over the zoo. Zoo guides give visitors information about the animals. A guide may explain how animals make their homes in the wild. Then she may answer any questions the visitors have. Some zoos have a section called the Children's Zoo. Oh, we have that here at our Cincinnati Zoo. There, a guide tells boys and girls all about certain animals. The children are even allowed to pet the animals. Now you know why people are important to a zoo. Each worker has a special job to do. Zoo workers help to make the zoo a wonderful place to visit. Oh, they've got goats and sheep they get to pet. So boys and girls, this is real information about what they do, what the workers do at the zoo. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned some things. That was really interesting what they have to do to make sure the animals are kept safely, but that we can go enjoy them. Thanks for listening.